Thanks very much for coming in, Peter. Now, before we get to Talk Matters Musical, Adventures on the Subcontinent this week must have um, brought a, well, I was going to say, raised some fear and doubt uh, in your mind. You know, how alarmed should we be and where do you think we are now with the nuclear movement? Uh, I guess most people feel uh, a sense of both deja vu, mm -hmm. a strong concern that the, the countries of the world haven't been able to exercise any real control over either India or Pakistan. Mm -hmm. Underlying all of this is the hypocrisy of the United States and the European nations, particularly the French and the United Kingdom, who've got nuclear weapons. There's still 20,000 warheads floating around. Underlying our hypocrisy is the fact that we mine uranium, uh, which can end up in nuclear weapons. But notwithstanding all of that, I think it's not a really good time. And I think it's a time when uh, people and governments have really got to be letting those particular countries know that the way that they're going is not a good one. And in fact, what it is, you could imagine that this world, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> um, I thought Ray was knocking there for a minute. Stage cough. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, look, it, it's a breakdown of global power, isn't it, really? I mean, you've got nation states bobbing up all over the place saying we're the greatest, we're as good as anybody else. Not that I understand that these people might, you know, that these countries mightn't feel as though other people have been telling them they're not the greatest. So I think the boot's firmly on the other foot if you follow my drift here. I do. But what worries me slightly is if. Um, it looks bloody simple to build these things now. Yeah, a little too simple. And I think one of the big problems that we've had is that uh, the export of uranium, the lack of safeguards in the movement of plutonium and enriched uranium, and the fact that the big powers haven't really put the kibosh on it from the right. word go. I mean, we, we do have a comprehensive test ban treaty, and it's a good treaty. Uh, if India and Pakistan signed up to it, and maybe they'll be pressured to sign up to it after this, we hope so, then we would have a means of keeping the world basically at the stage that it's at now. But if we don't have that treaty in place, and if we don't have the Americans and the powerful nations saying, look, no movement of the processing rods, no allowance to set up the facilities whereby you can actually produce a nuclear weapon, then we will start to see breakouts taking place. Well, I blame the internet. I blame yeah, the well, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm almost ready to go in the garage, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm almost just... ready to declare a certain part of Balambly nuclear, nuclear Nuclef equipped. Nuclear. Well, I was going to say, should nuclear Australia around. have the bomb? Should we have the bomb, Peter? Would you feel happier or more confident? Well, there's a one more nation Australian? context. Actually, what I wanted to do before I answer that question, Rob, yes. is actually, I brought some T-shirts. Yes, there. yeah, I can okay. see them too. Yeah. All right, here they are. A midnight old T-shirt for HG. It's a yes. black one. Oh, yes. Tremendous, yes. Black is the rock colour. Oh, yes, yes. good. And, uh, Roy, for you, a slightly larger one. It's white. The uh, colour of peace. Exactly. Uh, but <coughs> lurking yes. in the colour of peace. Yes. One of our favourite Queensland bands, the Dwarf Throwers. Yes. yes. Uh, they say, it's got one nation down the bottom, and it says, yes. we don't throw small bodies, we throw small minds. Oh, so well, that's you tremendous. Very Thank very you, Peter. Now, can we get to the issue? Should Australia have a bomb? Because <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I you mentioned the internet. On the internet, I, I, I imagine in a couple of years' time, maybe in a couple of weeks' time, Kiddies at home will be able to build the bomb themselves. What are we going to do about that? You know, we can go up to Jabaluka, get a bit of bloody uranium, HG and myself, you can come along. <laughs> we can enrich it in our backyard and bloody have our own bombs. Isn't that the future? Everyone with a bomb? Yeah, bombs away. Uh, I mean, yeah. it could happen, could it not? Yes. It could. Well, what are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? Don't all those, those songs, you know, written by people like Randy Newman and Tom Lehrer, don't they uh, all of a sudden have an incredible sort of currency which they have dropped? Drop had? the big one. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yes. I think really that uh, you're right about the internet and also about the fact that the world's starting to come away from being two big powers, you know, mm -hmm. communism and capitalism sort of weighed up against one another. Mm -hmm. And really what's happening is that there's a bit of a struggle for the hearts and minds and the souls of people. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the governments of, say, India, it's an extremist government. It's mm -hmm. a right-wing fanatical government. It's a mm -hmm. similar kind of thing that we're faced with here in Queensland. It's that same sort of tension, that mm -hmm. same sort of tendency to look to other people to blame, to look to other people to threaten. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's really up to citizens, citizens' groups, yes. and real democracy. Not the sort of democracy that gets played out, you know, for 30-second grabs and on the front page of the newspapers, but for real democracy to come to bear. And that means the world acting in concert to ensure that it has a peaceful 21st century. Now, we have the capacity to do it, we have the political power to do it. Yeah. They really do have yeah. the muscle to stop kids having bombs and even having Pakistan having bombs if they wanted to. They've just got to have the will to do it. Yeah. And Clinton's uh, very strong comments and Mr Howard's very strong comments have got to be read in the light of the fact that either they've been nuclear nations or they've been accomplices to it. So we have to say absolutely no, right across the board, top to bottom, left to right, then we've got a chance. Yeah. Do uh, fans of Midnight Oil uh, appreciate the politics of Midnight Oil? 
Uh, some would and some wouldn't, I think, Roy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it is, you, you, you're a, ba a band or belong to a band that reacts to political movements of the time. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, uh, many artists, uh, I think, take their emotional stuff, the yeah. stuff of the heart. Uh, yeah. A love affair, they're coming in and out of love, they're falling out of love. Yeah. And they work with that and that fuels their music. For the oils, it's more likely that we get fueled by issues that we see, by stuff that has a political content, yes. uh, which either makes us angry or frustrated or... Mm. You know, and that's what, well, what about singers? You know, Frank's just left us. Singers you admire. Do you admire, say, Frank or Perry Como, uh, singers of, of this ilk, uh, or, or not? <laughs> well... I think Frank, when he was a younger singer, you yes. know, he obviously was pretty good at it. Yes. In fact, we had someone working for us uh, a couple of years ago who actually worked for Frank when Frank came to Australia. I think he played up with yeah. a white shoe brigade in Queensland somewhere. Yes. And apparently the word with Frank was that um, if he approaches you, avert your eyes, look the other way. Mm. If he addresses you, don't answer. Is that <laughs> but, right? Yeah, but if he wants you to do something specific, then make sure you call him Mr Sinatra. Mm. Anyway. Mm. Right. Uh, singers so, I admire. Yeah. Oh. In Australia? Well, if you like. Uh, we've got a bunch of fine singers. Mm. I mean, I think uh, of the existing singers, we've got one of the finest jazz singers in the world, Vince Jones, one of the mm. finest blues jazz singers, interpreters, uh, Rene Gaia. Mm. We've got some fantastic rock shouters. Mm. Uh, we've got some terrific sort of balladeers yes. and narrators like Paul Kelly. Mm. And we've got young bands coming up like the Mavises and Grinspoon and Regurgitator. And they're people that maybe don't have classically terrific singing voices, but maybe they're sort of following my sort of thing, which is if you feel it and you sort of sing it, then it'll work. It'll happen. And towering yeah. above well, well, we, all of these, you've got yeah. Ian Terp's Terpy. <laughs> It's a worrying thought. Because we have, we, we have arguably the best bands per capita and singers per capita in the world, don't we, Peter? Yeah, I think that we do. Yeah, why, what is it about Australia? Why, why do we have such a strong musical industry, do you think? I think it's partly because of our isolation yeah. uh, and the fact that Australians have come from a culture which sang its way across the seas. Mm. I think that for a lot of us, it's a way of expressing ourselves in this place. And it's really interesting because Australians produce, it seems, more bands per capita than any mm. other country. Mm. And it's, I don't know, it's maybe we just, it's the pub. Yes. I'd say it's the pub. Yes. Mm. Now your new CD, uh, Redneck Wonderland, hits the shops, I think this week, or next week, uh, this is the, the single off the CD. Yes. Now the CD itself doesn't come out, I don't think, until a little bit later in June. Is, is this available in Hong Kong yet? On bootleg? I <laughs> I would guess that it is yes. <laughs> yeah. on the internet. Now, how does this happen? How does this happen? You obviously, are you, we've talked about this before, yeah. and you think that every record that you've ever made has been available in Hong Kong yeah. long before it's been available in Australia, and yet you must know this is going on, and so you take steps to avoid that happening, and yet it still happens. Still how happens, happen? yeah, and we'd be bootlegged in Bali. Yes. Well, I think the thing that, it, that we're facing is the fact that, uh, firstly, there's a great appetite for Australian music mm. around the place. Mm on the Asian subcontinent, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. But more importantly, these are places where royalty rates aren't paid to musicians at the level that they're paid here. They're places where the accounting is a little bit looser yes. around the edges. Yeah. They're places where you can purchase a CD manufacturing plant and start burning your CDs yes. and sticking them in the bottom of containers of baby food or yeah. uh, thongs or whatever yeah. and get stuck into it. Yes, but the, the, the truth of the matter is they wouldn't be able to do it unless they got the tape from somewhere. Now that's a worry. Now Who's leaking run, the tape? Yeah, yeah. They can must be a mate of yours. Run off a dab, <laughs> or a, you know, which is obviously a tiny thing that can get the the music out, or a, or a conventional cassette or something like that, because often the quality isn't as good as what you would like. No, that's true. Um, but you've never cracked the mole inside. No, the pirates are clever, mm. and uh, I think that's one of the big arguments that we've had about whether there should be this parallel import. It's copyright, and it's too technical to talk about mm -hmm. now, but basically it's one way of cutting down on piracy. I think if we didn't have some sorts of regulations here, and it's the same thing for our foodstuffs, for quarantine, and mm. for things of that kind, mm. you'd find that those people in low-wage countries where there's no regulations and no way of policing it would very quickly identify the market, produce the product, and flog it. Now, Redneck Wonderland, what are, what are some of the big themes, what are some of the big issues that you're driving the truck through with this one? Well, I think that uh, for a band like The Oils, we, you know, we've been playing for a long time in this country, and we really do love our country, but we're also very passionate about things that happen. And I think with Redneck, we just watched what went down over the last 18 months. We're watching the rise of Hansenism, we're watching sort of issues of reconciliation come unstuck, we're watching a whole raft of issues on environment. 
uh, I guess, if you like, the direction of the country. To us, it seemed like we were going, notwithstanding the faults that other people might have had and other leaders might have had, we were heading in a positive direction. Mm. The idea of a republic was something which meant something to us. It had a foundation. Now the republic and the foundation that we might have as Australians for a fair and equitable society, it's all up for grabs. Balls are in the air. And uh, Redneck Wonderland is our way of responding musically to that. So it could be called Australia is buggered. <laughs> is that what you're saying? Is that no. the oil's position? Australia is buggered. No, is that no. what you're saying, Peter? No, no. It's hardly an optimistic bloody view, is it? No, no, we wouldn't say that at all. Oh. No, now, you're just about to embark, I think, on about a 30-day tour over the next two months. This is, this is um, a rare activity these days for a band. I mean, uh, it used to be done several years ago. The, the big acts would go out on the road. We thrive on it. Yes, yeah. yes. And you, I was mentioning that I thought it was a hint of nostalgia in this for the old days when you could actually go out and do this. But you're obviously looking forward to this. I am. And Are you fit enough? Yeah. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and uh, I understand it's quite a night you've got organised. You've got uh, a Tasmanian band opening up for you and then surf video. Biggest, Sorry, surf footage. Surf footage, the biggest waves ever ridden, biggest yes. Wednesday. Yes. Uh, we really want to present uh, what I think hopefully will be the total oils experience, the total entertainment experience, political, social, physical, mm. oral, mm. it'll all be there. Bloody all in the clubs, all in the pubs. Oh, yeah. That's a bloody night. It is. Well, we certainly wish you well on that. And, uh, Peter, as you'd know, we do have commitments here at the Channel 9 show. Australia, can you chime in on the chorus of The Beds Are Burning as a way of thanking Peter Garrett?